Thanks for listening to the Von Hessler Doctrine Podcast. Remember, you can hear the show every weekday from 9 to noon right here on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. Live from Sherwood Forest in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, Hour 1 of the Von Hessler Doctrine begins right now. I am your lovable, huggable, mid-morning chat host, Eric Von Hessler, surrounded by the doctrinaires, man of a thousand voices, Tim Andrews, lady of quite a few voices in her own right, if I do say so myself, Autumn Fisher, and the handsomest producer in all of producery, Jerry Yamamoto. And monsoon season continues, yeah. Eric. My goodness, lots I, of rain. I made it uh, through on 400. Through the monsoon. <laughs> you made it through the rain. I made it through the Was that uh, Neil Diamond? Who was that? I made it through the rain. It might be a lady. You know, Credence has two great rain songs. Who else has two great rain songs? Only Credence Clearwater Revival. <laughs> but you know, we'll do that on my weekend music show. Let me tell you, it's Barry Manilow, one of my favorite. Dr. Dr. Right. Joseph, but Barry Manilow. I made it through That's, the rain. I made it through the rain. Uh, so, but you know, and he has a lot of good uh, uh, made it songs. Oh, yeah. Looks yeah. Like looks like we, we made, made it. it through the rain. <laughs> you can't forget Luke Bryan, too. Yeah, you can. No, yes, I can. Why not? <laughs> Where I come from. Rain is a good thing. Get out of here. Good stop it. <laughs> Where I come from, country music is a good thing. That's why I want that off the radio. Because that ain't country music. Rain is good thing. You have that open mic? Rain is good thing. Uh, well, it makes my baby drunk and cheese and the jeans and the whatever. Right. It makes corn. Corn I'll makes whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey good makes my baby food. get oh. a little frisky. Oh, I like those connected dots lyrics. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh... <laughs> we had that. I heard you play in an open mic, and I got to say, I disagree with this guy. Now, people are frustrated because it really was. I don't know. I think it might be tapering off a little bit. When I when I drove in at six thirty in the morning, it really was monsoon like on four hundred. I can understand this guy's frustration. I think I disagree with him. Can we please have another weather slash traffic 101 class with people on the road today? Don't put on your hazard lights when you're in the far right lane. Nobody can tell whether you're actually stopped or moving. Come on, people. I get his point, but I have to say overall, I like it in conditions like that when somebody puts on their hazards because it's a way of going, they like tapping out. I can't handle this. <laughs> And I like to know that about another driver. As you get close to them, I like to know that it's somebody who is just freaking out. There's no reason to freak out. People go crazy when it rains. I like to remind people, it's not fire falling from the sky. It's water in varying amounts. But when you're driving, it only seems overwhelming if you don't know how to drive properly. So I will give a little... A uh, bit of a uh, a, a training, uh, a trainer here for this, just a little bit. And what I told both of my sons before they learned to drive, before I brought in the professionals, this is very simple. You drive from your torso. What does that mean? You drive from your torso. What I mean is, you don't want to be one of these people who drives from their head. They're up. They're they're up on their their uh, the. Uh, on the wheel, and they're looking around. Oh, there's a thing. Oh, there's another thing. Oh, there's a thing to react to. I'll react to it. No. You want comfort in your torso area where you're sitting, right there in the waist. You want that part of your stomach and your legs, your pelvic, bowl, your pelvic you area to be comfortable. That's what you drive from your pelvis, people. You keep that area comfortable. This is what the uh, race drivers do. And you keep a calmness there, and that's where all impulses come from. So it's raining. Wow, it's raining a lot. That's kind of freaky. Let's relax in the pelvic area, slow the car down if necessary, and drive appropriately because now there's more water falling from the sky. But that's all it is, people. It's not fire. It's just water. I love the people who park in the parking lot and run like hell for the door. Again, it's not fire falling from the sky. It's water. Unless you're a wicked witch, you won't melt. You'll be fine. But just got my hair done. Well, I can understand that, but you should have a little plastic thing you put over. Oh, she's 90? 
That's women right. don't wear those anymore. <laughs> well, if you just got your hair should. done, if you went to the beauty parlor and it was really cloudy outside, you might want to grab one of those for the next 24, 48 hours. But just relax while you're driving. Drive from uh, the torso. And the torso. Not the torso. I guess I'm, <laughs> torso is a little too high up. I don't want you yeah. up in the chest area. I drive, drive with my chest. Drive from the pelvis. Drive from the thorax. Yes. Be very comfortable <laughs> and centered. Your center of gravity. I'll be, you know, the uh, the pit of my stomach feels comfortable. And if your stomach does not feel comfortable, let up on the accelerator a little bit. Make yourself comfortable, and then you'll be able to drive through this stuff. But don't be... The person Drive driving from, from their head, jerking their neck around. Oh, there's a thing. Oh, there's a thing there. Oh, my gosh, there's a thing. Just just sink into your body. Know yourself. And just really listen to yourself. I think that's what I'm saying. I think it's a very... Just, you know, if you're in your head, you can't be in your heart. New Age Driving with Eric Von Hessler. Let's do this. Headlines for Thursday, February 13th. Remember when you used to say New Age? You drive? Do I have a mantra? Yeah, yeah you're just, like, yeah. precious one, I am good enough to make it. No, I have a word uh, that I've made up for myself, and I make it up for other drivers as well, okay. but they have to pay me $2,500 for their special oh, mantra the word. Words? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I learned it no. from the Maharishi. Mm-hmm. No, you can't do it What'd without my word. What's your word? <laughs> my word? Yeah. I made up my own. I was trying to slip you I made, I made up my own transcendental meditation word. Oh, well, here's $2,000. Uh, I remember it. No, it's mine. You can't have it. Oh. I mean, so you have you to give it. him his special one. He just well, gave if he gives me the money, I will. I can make up words. But uh, when my my special mantra one, which you have to spend twenty five hundred dollars to get it from an official uh, transcendental meditation uh, thing. I just mm-hmm. remembered a word that I made up. My little brother and I, we were making up words back when I was in like third grade. We were on bunk bunk uh, bunk beds. And uh, I was on the bottom, I guess, because I was the bigger person. He was on the top bunk, and we were just making up words. And mine was squanchous. Mm. Squanchous. So that's my mantra. You can take it and try to use it, but it's not yours. And you didn't it's pay for it. It's that sound so it when you work. walk around in wet socks. Squanchous. <laughs> I thought I had everything. All right, what do you got? Well, you know what I forgot to say to you guys this morning? Uh, happy Palentine's Day, Tim. Happy uh. Palentine's Day, Eric. And happy Galentine's Day, Autumn. For heaven's sakes, I must be working with a millennial. My life is ruled by these those little words on the calendar. What is that, honey? Look closer. Get a magnifying glass. Today is, oh, well, we're millennials. We have to do something. We have to have some sort of Galentine's and or Palentine's Day experience because the little words on the calendar in that box tell me, and now I have to reflect that. These guys are actually doing it. His girlfriend is getting together with uh, for Galentine's Day. I've seen Day. it all over Twitter. Having my Galentine's date tonight with my lady. 25 uh. years ago. Did not exist. No. <laughs> Anybody who is participating in Galentine's Day, here's the fact. I'm sure you're nice people. It's not possible to be an original thinker. Hey, the thing inside that box on my calendar <laughs> says something. Let me call my girlfriends and respond to it. And do something. We can't do it tomorrow. It doesn't have the little words in the box from the calendar. I have to do it today. Besides, tomorrow I have to terrorize my boyfriend. My Galentine's Day Galentine. Yeah. She she uh, canceled on me. She canceled oh, no. on you. Well, you don't have very good friends. Break up with her. Yeah, break up with her. <laughs> How could you do that on Galentine's Day? I know. Told, this is, uh, but remember, <laughs> it's also Palentine's Day. Like, I know I'm getting with some buddies tonight. We're going to go out to yeah, the bar, are. grab a couple drinks and stuff. Yeah. Why? Because it's Palentine's That's what Day. what you do every day. No, well, it's, not every so day. So you and your friends get it's a Thursday. Yeah. He calls it pre-gaming. Thursday for the weekend. Nice today, for me, it's balance. Times Day, where I uh, stand on one foot. Yeah, and you balance yourself. <laughs> balance. With a broom. It's a challenge. Uh, with a broom. Uh, balance, with a broom. Take the Valentine's Challenge. I mean, come on, yeah. people. You don't have to think for yourselves. The calendar and the internet, social media, will tell you the experience you're supposed to have for today. Now just do it. <laughs> And shut up. Hey, uh, first week of March, come over to my place for Aunt Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, and then, uh, Jared told me that uh, for Valentine's Day, his girlfriend is trying to get him to watch a rom-com. He said, I'm not into rom-coms. And, and I said, well, they're like all other movies. Some are good. Most of them are not. And he said that uh, he thinks... 
<laughs> he said, I think I'm going to have to watch that marriage story. That's not a rom com. <laughs> no, I'm glad That's you depressing. warned me. I'm no. glad you warned me because. My son told me that it's a great movie, but it's just like in Act One, everything goes wrong and you just get kind of dragged through the glass for the next two hours. It's not a rom com. You know what we are doing, though, tomorrow is we're actually going to do that Waffle House uh, Valentine's Day dinner. Uh, nothing against Waffle House, <laughs> but again, it's kind of a thing that Our people say lava. they do. And so uh, we millennials will have that experience. When I called them, they said they have many. Did you think of that, by the way, or was it some sort of corporate campaign that caught your eye? I have always wanted to do that. Oh, wasn't it lucky that they came up with a corporate campaign for you? Yes, it was great. Because they did it. since you were four, you thought, if I ever have a girlfriend. I'm so terrible at that. Like, Where do you want to go eat? Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! I, I always, uh, <laughs> I always have my wife make the reservations. Ah, you know you're better at it. Than I, I tried am. this yeah. year. I tried this year, and a very subtle. Well, what about this place? And I'm like, okay, fine. My wife left town yesterday. She wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> I'm off the hook. You better call her. I better call her. Well, yeah, I, I, I do you. talk to my wife. It's Valentine's Day. I'll text her. Hey, happy Valentine's Just a heart. Day. Just Maybe a heart. if I'm lucky, there'll be some sort of algorithm that makes balloons go up in the sky when it she will. opens it up. What are you going to do, though? There's not going to be any Instagram worthy moments, though. Mm. Like this Waffle yeah, House promised oh, that yeah. there would be different yeah, sections. Here's for my Instagram. challenge. Here's my challenge to you. To hell with the broom challenge. Here's my Yamamoto challenge. Whatever you do for Palentine's, Galentine's, or Valentine's Day, total blackout. No friends. Get any sort of visual evidence that you did it. You can go do this on Valentine's Day, but you're not allowed to post a picture of you and your girlfriend doing it. Is it even possible? Is it even possible, Jared Yamamoto? I don't think so. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Alan Hunt says he's going to eat chocolates at the shooting range. I do want to see pictures of that. The Von Hessler Doctrine. He's extremely funny. He's got a great sense of humor. And he brings a lot of good content to the air. A 95.5 WSB. It let his news and talk. All right, enough with the Galandine and the Palantine Valentine. Let's have a story there, Jared Yamamoto. All right, several Republican lawmakers expressed concern over Trump's comments on the sentencing of Roger Stone. Eric. Well, he tweeted that the sentencing guidelines... By the way, can we... <laughs> the Von Hessler Doctrine is going to report the story. <laughs> I tried to call six people to form a panel like CNN. Nobody returned my call. So I'm forced to actually report the story. The story is that the Department of Justice had sentencing guidelines for the judge on Roger Stone. Wasn't the sentencing. Once again, this just in, the real story. The sentence was not changed by the Department of Justice concerning Roger Stone. Before someone is sentenced by a judge in these cases, these federal cases, the Department of Justice has their recommendation to the judge. Once again, the only place reporting the real story. This is about a recommendation to a judge. It is not about the amount of time that Roger Stone has been sentenced. Why do I know that? Because he has not been sentenced yet and will not be for a few more days. The judge could decide to sentence Roger Stone to 35 years if that's... I imagine there's probably some kind of restriction on what the judge can do. But the judge has a latitude that could be less than seven years or more than nine years. Those are the official years that the DOJ came out with as a, here's the true story again, sorry to bore you, the sentencing guideline, the recommendation to the judge. We, as the people who prosecuted this case and got a guilty verdict, we are telling you, the judge, we think that you should give Roger Stone seven to nine years as a result of that verdict. Again, that is not the sentence. The judge has the ability to sentence two years or 15 years or whatever. So Trump tweets about this immediately. Not a smart idea, but we're way past that. This guy tweets about everything. There can't be anything that is under the radar or a malicious plot because the guy has no filter. There is a respected point of view that says it's an ongoing case that has not completely been resolved yet he hasn't been he hasn't been sentenced so the president probably shouldn't be commenting on ongoing cases but we're way past that this president comments about everything and he does it through twitter after he said he thought it was excessive 
William Barr, the attorney general, went back and said, okay, we're changing. Again, sorry to bore you with the real story. They're not changing the sentence. They're changing the recommendation to the judge of what the Department of Justice thinks the range should be in the sentence. That's what's happening. Does that sound like the end of the republic to anybody listening to me right now, given the fact that the judge still has the ability, as she did two, three days ago, to sentence Roger Stone to whatever the judge thinks? There are no restrictions. Boy, gosh darn it, I wanted to say fascist, but Eric, (laughs) are you telling me the state has no ability to make this judge do anything? Sorry to bore you, but the six people I called in for my CNN panel wouldn't get back to me, so I have to come at you with the truth. The problem is is that they tried to make it lighter. No, they can't make it lighter because they don't sentence. But they want it. That's the problem. So four members of the Department of Justice that worked on these things resigned. There's nothing wrong with that. When you are working in the executive branch and you don't agree with your boss, the President of the United States, the proper thing to do is resign. That's what you're supposed to do. It's better for the Republic than leaking or staying as the only adult in the room. That whole concept. If you see anybody on television who says, well, thank goodness we have an adult in the room, that's somebody who doesn't believe in democracy or a constitutional republic. 63 million adults, you have to be 18 to vote, right? That's right. 63 million adults that you disagree with are in the room. They're the people who put this president in the Oval Office. And if you don't like it, boy, there's a lot you have in America, but sorry, you just have to put up with the will of the people. But what about the popular vote? What about it? Donald Trump was elected and put in the White House by the exact same rules that have put every other president since Washington in the White House. Why do you think this one should have been different? So it's on you to tell me that. Why should this one? Oh, because you know, well, there's a reason. I don't either. He's awful. There's a reason. (laughs) He's evil. All right. You have uh, Trump uh, telling uh, reporters that Roger Stone's recommendation was unfair. This is his point of view. And as you know, this president has no filter. That's why you know there's no nefarious plot behind doors. By the way, with Trump also, this is how you know that we've never been visited by UFOs. <laughs> I have friends who have constantly said for years, when you're elected president, the first thing they do is they take you to the room and give you all the UFO evidence and you have sworn to secrecy. Yeah, I don't think if Trump ever saw that room. Wow, you should see the lizard people. Wow. Here, look, here's a picture. <laughs> look at the wow. UFOs. Why do we have these? <laughs> so this is how you know we've never been visited. There's no classified information that presidents have turned on to because you would have known about it on Twitter. Almost immediately. So go to number two. Nobody even knows what he did. In fact, they said he intimidated somebody. That person said he had no idea he was going to jail for that. That person didn't want to press charges. They put him in for nine years. It's a disgrace. And frankly, they ought to apologize to a lot of the people whose lives they've ruined. Trump actually, uh, I'll just tell you what's going to happen here. My guess is it'll happen right after the election, whether he wins or whether he loses in November. He's going to pardon everybody. Everybody. Because, he, first of all, he thinks Stone would be out walking free if he had never had any contact with himself. And that's what, he's, that's what his point of view is going to be. Even Manafort. Trump probably believes that Manafort is guilty of the things he was found guilty of. What most people don't know is that he wasn't found guilty of doing anything after 2012, long after he was part. He also was fired from the campaign for being too close to Ukraine and Russia. But I think Trump is going to say... These guys, the only reason that they're in jail is because they had contact with me. So my guess is between November and January of this year, whether the president wins or loses, he's going to pardon everybody. So CNN, just start assembling your panels of outrage now. Get ahead of the game. See the latest thing. We're about to do listicles, right? Absolutely. I forget, is that my favorite or least favorite? Oh, definitely your favorite today. No, I think uh, think it's my least favorite segment. Oh, okay. But, I mean, that's all relative, right? I mean, I like all of our segments. That's just my least favorite. Doesn't mean I hate it. Yeah, I mean, you have to categorize them, I don't really hate it. I hate the way that you deliver it. (laughs) It's just not really. It's more about you than the actual segment, I think. Oh, okay. All right. If I really deconstruct, get in there and do a deeper dive. But we'll get into more of this later, but... You see that movie Birds of Prey tanked. Yeah, I tanked expected it too. Over the weekend. And I hear it's not all that bad of a movie, but it's another one of these that uh 
they decided to market it as if it's going to be a big lecture to people about misogyny. And strangely enough, people really aren't into spending $10, $15 to be told what terrible people they are. And usually, but my understanding is the movie actually isn't as bad as all that, but they're, they're tanking. And now there's a bunch of articles out there. Apparently, uh, it's not the movie and it's not the marketing. It's never, the problem is never with the people who make these things. <laughs> The problem, you know, what the problem is that like three or four different articles I saw on my aggregator yesterday. Apparently, um, it's that fifteen-year-old boys in this country are are misogynist, oh. and they won't go see the movie because Margot Robbie isn't being as sexy as they. So it's <laughs> it's not the fault of the people who make the movies or market the movies. No, it's fifteen-year-old boys because they think girls are sexy, and that has to be changed immediately. Let's do this. Listicles, millennials write them and we read them. Maybe we get a new intro for that. You don't hate it so much. Yeah, I don't know if I hate the intro. (laughs) Listicles. Oh, 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 that's it. The reason I do this is because I know that these are. I don't know if you can say they're all the rage anymore. They may have peaked and kind of go on the other side at this point, but. Uh, I never read it. If it's a listicle, I just don't read it. I'm not interested. I like stories. Beginning, middle, end, essays. Boring. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I like this I like a deep dive. So I'm what, like in a pool? I, what I'm saying yeah. Do you like gifts? What I'm saying no. What I'm saying is that uh, I'm um I'm not a moron. So a listicle does not appeal to me. Where I can look at I can glance at something and then walk around as if I'm an expert for the rest of the day. And also they make no sense. They'll say something like, 47 must-reads this summer. <laughs> Who reads 47 <laughs> books in a summer? Shut-ins. You said, you, you followed the number 47. Summer, yeah, <laughs> you followed the number 47 with the hyphenated must-reads. <laughs> must So uh, n- all of these have to be read. Well, the language means nothing anymore. All right. <laughs> well, they <laughs> Listicles. Def- they definitely- 1611 things that will make you totally freak out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Totally freak out. Well, they definitely are spreading- Because a total freak out, you end up in the emergency room, right? Yeah. Thir- I- 1311 <laughs> list. BuzzFeed definitely perfected the listicle, but there are other sites like Cracked and Bustle. How do you perfect a listicle? You make uh-huh. a list? No, they built yeah. it. They built it in a, in, a, in a laboratory. They did some test mm-hmm. runs. List factory. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the list. All right, first thing we got to do to make this list factory <laughs> awesome. All right, we got, I don't know. I like it, but does it have legs? Hey, <laughs> you have union jabs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to give you two to choose from at the beginning. These are both from BuzzFeed, okay? Okay. So here's the first one. Listen, just tell me you're going to give me a choice. I don't like when people say I'm going to give you two to choose from. In order to have a choice, there has to be at least two. Uh, well, I have well, six. Well, I'm trying. I, you have, I mean, just if you, have six, him, Jared. if you have six to choose from. I know, I'm giving a lecture, a meaningless lecture on word economy using way more words. Mm-hmm. I recognize deep it. Deep into this segment I already. recognize it. Clive Cliverson, you can't be coached. You know what it is? Uh, I'm trying to do this look, list. Look, he's thing. coaching you. I'm you coaching. can't coach the coaching. Yeah, you know coach. what I think is really happening here Coachables. is Eric is really picking apart the beginning of this segment so that we don't actually have to do it. That's right. I'm trying to right? find enough humor that uh, we'll just have a fun segment, and we never actually have to get to the listicles. But if it's if it's more than two, if it's three or more, then tell me I've got three, whatever you got. You have but a choice. I have a choice. Okay, there must be at least two. That's These what I'm are thinking. from BuzzFeed. Yes. 15, 15 <laughs> pointlessly gendered products that are truly unnecessary. 15 pointlessly gendered products that are truly unnecessary. Now, what does that mean? It, well, it means like lady razors, I'm guessing, is on there. Yes. Oh. So some of these I might agree with. But still, you can tell from the person who wrote the story and the headline comes off a college campus where the sociology professors taught her or him to be angry Her name about. Is Crystal. Yes, to be <laughs> angry about. There's no need for anger. If I got a, a, a razor store, then I figure out ways to sell different razors to different people because here's a clue I'm not in the razor business for charity. Sorry, millennials. I'm trying to make as much money off of you as I can, and <gasps> that really doesn't offend you. But there was you a don't sociology. Do it for the love of razors. No, and, 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 and let me just tell you this: it doesn't really offend you. You were told by a sociology professor you should be offended, just like my Republican friends were told last ne- week they should really care about Mitt Romney. In reality. It doesn't really affect their lives. They're not really angry. They've just been told. So on the other side, sociology professors tell people, hey, this is something you might not have been angry about if I hadn't pointed it out to you. 
So, okay, you market razors for men and women. It's kind of dumb. A razor is a razor is a razor, but it's not offensive. As a matter of fact, maybe some little girl got to go to college because daddy found a good way to market razors to women. You ever think of that? That's a decent thing. There's some good examples that Crystal (laughs) brings up. Now, the other choice that you have is the 24 birthday gift ideas for the friend who always says, quote, don't give me anything this year. I have one idea for that person. Yeah. I'm going to make them very happy. Nothing. Yeah. What, do you hate your friend? Why yeah. are you forcing gifts when on someone who doesn't says want one? no, here's a way to just do Say whatever yeah. they said no to. These are the same people that tell me no means no. All of a sudden, yeah, no exactly. means yes when it comes to gifts. See, Eric, I like getting birthday gifts myself. Uh-huh. And even though my friends don't want me to get them anything, I'm going to do it because I want them to get me something. And if they and, don't, they'll feel bad. Right. And also, you're going to- And I know better. You're going to spread I know the that love they'll too. really want yeah. this like thing that this came off of this dumb list. Nothing yeah. like forcing love on people. Oh, come on. Even Tim Andrews would like this one. Uh, number seven on it's that an apple. list. Hey, did I didn't, I, I want, I'm more interested in the other one. We can uh, get to this uh, okay, one. Okay. Right. I want to know what's on there besides Lady Razors. Well, okay. so the first thing. Remember they, Lady Razors? She uh, used to be with Lady Gaga for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. She kept cutting her, though. Yeah. Well, the first thing yeah, they bring what? up is. <laughs> you know, I'm going to start taking money away for wordplay. <laughs> You're docked $10. Yeah, try and get it from me. I'll try. I'll fight you in a parking lot. The first one they bring up is men's travel bottle set, like shampoo bottle sets. The fact right. that they market them for men. I know, but again, it's again, it's it's not sexist. You These when you have make me insane. <laughs> yeah. Because all they are are someone's under a deadline. And you yeah. know what this crystal was doing? She was walking around Target. <laughs> right. And she saw a men's thing yeah. Yeah. and she was like, This is silly. Yeah. What else is yeah. here? Yeah. Oh, a razor for women and all yeah. like Actually and, and again, I wouldn't mind if the point of view was this is silly. But the idea that it's sexist, it's not sexist. When you have a product, Ugh. you try, is there one iPhone or is there an iPhone for somebody who will spend $400 and an iPhone for somebody who will spend $1,300? Is there one laptop or a laptop for people who will spend $500 and a laptop for people who will spend $2,500? When you have a product and they work and gen- you're past that point, they work, people generally like them. Now you try to figure out ways to market them. <sighs> Some people like rainbow colors on everything. Does it make the computer cooler? No, but you might spend an extra hundred dollars for a rainbow <laughs> computer. Is that silly? Yes. Should it anger you? No. All right, well what about this one? Number six then. These man and woman protein shakes that actually contain the same ingredients. Again, they do. They get, it's called lifestyle. Uh, all of this, I just want to say to Crystal, this is just called lifestyle. And you yourself, Crystal, I don't know who you love. I don't know if it's One Direction or Joni Mitchell. I have no idea. One Direction broke up. I'm, you can still love them. The Beatles broke up. Did you hear? People still buy their stuff. So <laughs> You're not allowed to like them anymore. <laughs> You're not allowed to like a band? No. My point is, I remember when uh, I, I was 17 and I was getting all high and mighty uh, in front of my older brother about how people, they just fall for advertisements, right? They just fall for advertising. And uh, and my brother goes, well, you're not above it. I said, oh, no, I wouldn't fall for it. And he pointed out, remember those uh, in, the, in the middle of Rolling Stone magazine, they would have uh, the guy who was sitting in a chair and the speakers were like blowing Max his L. hair. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's like He's like, he pointed to that one. And he goes, uh, yeah, that, that appeals to you. you. You've done stuff based on that. And I go, eh, yeah, yeah. you got me. We all have a lifestyle. We all like to be told that it's a good lifestyle. And that's what all this stuff is about. Hey, you know what? Almost every new car car will do you just fine and will last well past the point of paying payments for it. But if you notice with car commercials, some of them are very millennial focused mm. and uh, experiences and look at yeah, the uh, family. Yeah, yeah. That car is not more millennial than the other car. It's called lifestyle. They're marketing to you. Noticing it and understanding it is good. Maybe thinking it's silly is okay. But you've been told to get angry about it because that opens up more slots for more teaching and more jobs for professors of sociology. Everything comes back down. We are living in the era of sociology. The right. sociological era. It's, hey, it's uh, socio- yeah, we had the, pros- what was that, the Prozac era? 
Yeah. Pr- prosaic. Uh, uh, <laughs> now you've uh, said it, and uh, I can't say the, it right. The, the prototype part. Protozoa. Protozoa. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right, I'll but, give you. Uh, I'll give Patagonia. Context. The Patagonia. Boy. Yeah, yeah, everybody's I love wearing that those store. funny yeah. coats. Yeah. I'll give you one more. Okay, this one might sway you here. Yeah. What about when you're in the grocery store or in the uh, in the uh, like the Home Depot or something, and yeah. you see. Lady garden gloves. Somebody took a snapshot of this and uh, put it on their on their on their, on their Snapchat, and they said, "This is ridiculous." That's it's, true. It's, it's, they have smaller hands. They're they're women. Do I have can't get a dude hands. glove. They, yeah. It doesn't fit my stupid. Wait a minute. Are you saying that there's a difference between men and women? Because if you are, we're sending the cops over to have you arrested and put in jail soon. Because you know what sucks. I'm so for, outraged. For guys. It's for guys who have small hands. And have to get the lady gloves. Yeah, it's humiliating for them. I wear can't, men's gloves. Can we just have gloves at different sizes? You're like, oh, I have to. I'm a dude, and I have to wear this like pink camouflage. Uh, well, <laughs> we were talking about the rom coms earlier, and uh, said, well, Christina likes them, and I said women like rom coms, and guys basically don't, and yet we're still supposed to believe this nonsense that there's no difference between men and women and i will bring it up again if there's no one's answered this if there's no difference between men and women how come 90 percent of the people who consult psychics and astrologers are women if there was no difference between men and women shouldn't that be 50 <laughs> 50 i have the perfect uh, uh listicle for that eric oh really Actually, yeah this is from yeah. elite hey, daily man, you got a listicle for everything i sure do this is uh the that's four, why we invite you to the parties this is the four zodiac signs who make the best galentine's day partners eric oh, oh it's just you know i i i weep for the trees that were felled <laughs> In order for this stuff to get published, although I know now it's all yeah, zeros was... and ones, there were no trees. So you're not crying. I weep for the carbon footprint that was emitted. Don't you want to hear the four best ones, four best zodiac signs? Well, that music tells me that at best that's going to be a tease, Woo. and we're going to find out who's going to come back. My guess, Aquarius. Ah, oh, Tim Andrews makes me laugh. He's yelling at a. 12 year old AOC. Oh no, it's 2007, so she's what? Uh, 12. I don't know. Something. <laughs> she's, something. Like a, she's showing something off at a 17. science fair. It's like, she's probably a one. This is science. Phase one summary. <laughs> Phase two, future research application. You'd be proud of your 17 year old giving her science <laughs> yeah. fair thing. This is science. <laughs> I'm yelling at a 17-year-old AFC. I'll dance. Look at me dance. I'm a millennial. That means it's better. Science. Uh, do you have another listicle? For well, you don't want to I mean, go- you can disagree with the policy prescription she has. But you have to Science. Go back. <laughs> we were going through the four Zodiac signs who make the best Valentine's Day partners. Oh, here. were we? Oh. Yeah. Oh, let's Sorry go back to interrupt that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to the real news. Science. I promise we're going to have real news at the top of the hour. So first of all, the first First of all, anybody who thinks that uh, the stars have anything to do with your life, I'm not going to call you a moron. That's too harsh. But ignorant? Yes, you're ignorant. You don't know. This is help for Autumn since her Valentine's Day canceled on her. She can go out to the bar and she can ask if the people that she talks to are one of these four here. Okay, yeah. So so they suggest... I, Aquarius always does well. Hey, yes, Aquarius is. They're, yeah. they're like the best of everything. They're always, you know, they're it's, always. It says here that they the love. Most popular kids at the party. It says they love to rebel against traditions. Do they? Perhaps this may sound a bit sinister, but Aquarius loves playing devil's advocate. Hey, perhaps this may sound silly, guys, but where the moon and stars are at the moment you're born has absolutely zero effect on what's going to happen to you tomorrow. Hour two of the Von Hessler Doctrine begins right now. The Von Hessler Doctrine, by the way, proud to say, still 100% coronavirus free. For now. <laughs> well, I know. I know. It's like, again, a 14th case. Always, the rest of the sentence should be in a country of 330 million people. <laughs> it would be like. Imagine one dollar bills on a table, right? And you have them in 330 different stacks of a million, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a huge table in a huge room. So a million dollars, 330 stacks of a million dollars, 330 million dollars. And then I take 14 one dollar bills and set them aside. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then I try to con- convince you, oh, no, this is going to have a big influence <laughs> on the rest of those dollar bills. Well, think yeah. about how many people have the flu, just the plain old well, flu. I mean, there is a, there's, a, there's a reason to want to get around this. Yes, there's more. But I was, as I was saying to uh, my young friend Jared Yamamoto before we went on, the flu, there's a bunch of different strains of it. So somebody would have caught you know, 10,000 years ago, whenever this started, if they would have gotten around the first strain, we probably wouldn't have so many strains of it. So the difference that we should be on, the world should be trying to do everything it can here, because you got one strain of this thing, let's get a hold of it now, before it begins. It may be some sort of thing from the SARS thing earlier, I don't know. I'm no, I'm no doctor or scientist or researcher, but both things are true. We should get ahead of this because it's highly contagious. And but but the other side is if you're in America and you don't have a habit of traveling to China, or you're not in the electronics industry going to any kind of uh, big electronic show anytime soon, you're you, you're almost certainly not going to get it. Yes, you I were. S- yeah, you're, I sorry. sent you and Jared a, a story last night. A lab in California, uh, in three hours, created a vaccine for this, and now they're testing it on mice. Well, that's fine. And uh, that's another thing. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Oh, wait. No, I don't think we should let these big pharmaceutical companies with their profit motive. Aren't you glad there's big pharmaceutical companies that have already laid down all the investment necessary and still have the profit motive to want to create a... A vaccine for? Aren't you glad? Because I don't think Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton in their basement are going to come up with. <laughs> I want to drive around with aerosol spray and kill the virus that way with bleach everywhere. Here's my talk radio <laughs> rule: if you say things like "big pharma" and hate them, you're not allowed to get the vaccine for coronavirus. You hate them. Why would you? Why would you accept anything? We all know Bernie Sanders could, could, could create it in a lab somewhere. We don't, these pharmaceutical, they do nothing for us, except make our lives generally more pleasant. Cure us of certain degree. But other than that, Bernie Sanders has got an idea. It's right, I do. I, I took some 7-Up, I let it fester, <laughs> and then I put some herbs in it, let it mold. I took it, I'm fine. Why do we have so many great medicines, <laughs> so many cures for diseases that we didn't used to have? Two words. Profit. Motive. Researchers are willing to put in years and years and years because they think, oh, here's a dirty thing. (laughs) They think they might get rich. (laughs) And that's why we have so many cures for things that we didn't have cures for before. And that's something, this profit motive. I can't wait till Bernie Sanders gets rid of it. But hopefully after they get a vaccine for that coronavirus. All right, let's do this. More headlines for Thursday, February 13th. More headlines. Yeah. Yeah. You leave the doctor and voice lady. You know what? The doctor and voice lady has gone to HR. Has gone to HR Uh about the bullying that she receives from Autumn Fisher. Making me sick. (laughs) Doctor voice lady is sick. Did she sound sick? No, not at all. Does she have the coronavirus? Can you play it again, or you get lost in the? Play it again. Play it again, Alan. More headlines for Thursday, February 13th. It might be a little... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was fighting through it at the time. It's really kicked wouldn't in. Wouldn't it be hilarious now. if... Uh, <coughs> it would be hilarious if after that big rant, she gives me the coronavirus <laughs> and I end up with it. I'll say, oh, More boy. coronavirus for Somebody call- February 13th. <laughs> so if Eric gets the coronavirus after that last rant, somebody call Lana set and tell her, here's an example of actual hey. irony. Irony, it actually. <laughs> you can learn Alanis something. It's more I said. I'll answer your phone if you call me. She's uh, got a Broadway show. I'm on Broadway. <laughs> what's it called? I'm not invited to Nick Coulier. I don't know what's called. He's not allowed in my theater. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, what's happening in the... Uh, in the seats in that theater. I don't want to know. What do you got for me? All right, you sure you don't want the? T- you sure you don't want the twenty six best things to do in Atlanta this winter? Are you still on the listicles? <laughs> ah, no. The number one best thing is for Eric to put his feet up in the Von Hessler compound. That's what I'll be doing most of the time. Hey, that's and number twenty six. The Rolling Stones. Is that number twenty six? Yeah, that's number twenty six. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> be cool and go out and uh, g- spray paint graffiti one night. <laughs> On the belt line. It's on my bucket list. I wanted to be a douchebag.
for one night. What about the lighted up balloons thing on the build line? You could go to that. Yeah, that's that's then, in the summertime, not then, the wintertime. That's no, why you have to check this sorry. list because there's a lot of things that are inside that you wouldn't they normally have one of those do. ice castles? I didn't see one. How come on we don't list. have an ice castle? You know what? We need one. Yeah, we do. We should invest. It wouldn't have, wouldn't have completely rained down to the ground this melted. morning. You know, this weather is going, it's absurd. It's 70 degrees, and then I think tomorrow it's going to be 30 or something. I'm not Kirk, so don't. I thought it was 50 something. Oh, like, whatever. I just. 50 so. degrees. You worry about Maryland. Yeah, you worry about Maryland. Well, weather. I thought I'll it was funny. It was Atlanta. like, oh, it's the well, temperature's going to drop to 50 something. <laughs> well, it is from, it's like a, crazy. I have three different coats I have to have laid out by my personal <laughs> assistant every morning. <laughs> Your wife? Yes. Because I don't know. It's, 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 you don't know which coat. Usually I'm used to, you know, you grab a coat for a couple of months. Life is so hard. Like, it I is. can bring three coats. Decisions. Mm. It's like it's so cold in the office, but then it's hot outside, but then it gets cooler. Oh, my God. It's never cold enough in the office. Telecommute. Telecommute. That's I can't I telecommute. Do. I'm too lazy. If I don't get I up. I telecommute, and it's a yeah, bit. Yeah. If I, if I don't get I'm up. I'm wearing pajama pants right now. Take us. You're wearing. Oh. I didn't think she was wearing anything. <laughs> Pajama pants, baby. <laughs> if I don't get up, take a shower, comb my hair, drive to work, I'm not going to do work. I, I can't telecommute. What do you pretend to do all that stuff? You get up, you take a shower, you go through the normal process except for hopping in the car. If I, if I know that I don't have to be somewhere, I'll just drink till three in the morning and, you know, roll over. <laughs> Roll over. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live from Sir. No one can see me. Live from Sir. <laughs> <Blah. laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me a story. All right. Real Let's one see. here. President Trump is set to visit Daytona Beach during the Daytona 500 oh, race weekend this weekend. Look at that. He knows where to go. He goes to Gentlemen, the. Gentlemen, <laughs> start your cars. <laughs> You know, they do have a truck race. So you, you like trucks. I like yeah. trucks. Big trucks, small trucks, 18-wheelers. Is that he, what it is? He knows 18-wheeler with a cab behind it. <laughs> that would be cool. They used to have those. They don't do those anymore. They don't do the trucks? The they big to, rigs. Yeah. Why not? No, they don't do the big rigs. Why? Why? He loves trucks. You're the real guy. Trucks. Why? Well, because it was just a little too unwieldy. You know? Oh, come yeah. on. They crash? They, well, no. Who, likes, just little, who doesn't top, like the crash? They're a little top heavy. I know. They yeah. fall over and yeah. crash. Yeah. The banking at Daytona is not really good for that, I don't think. Did they have restrictor plates? No, they don't. On the trucks? Uh, so no. the pickups. That's a, They're like pickup a, trucks. What about an El Camino? They don't need restrictor plates. How about an El Camino? Half car, half truck? Ooh, President yeah. Trump, President, that's kind of what the trucks look like. The President Trump, uh, uh, there's no restrictor plates anymore. They, Why? There's no carburetors in NASCAR anymore. Why, are they all battery powered? No, not battery powered. It's, uh, what do you call that, uh, fuel injection, just like uh, street cars. Oh, uh, Okay. So, well, I really don't know a lot about uh, cars or racing, <laughs> but I just love Daytona. I love trucks. And trucks. So, uh, yeah, you, he goes like the national championship in college football. You know, that's a good crowd for him. Daytona 500, always a good crowd for Republican presidents. And then I'm going to the women's lacrosse championships <laughs> in <laughs> San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> you get a big response there. Hello, San Antonio. I love whatever this game is. <laughs> <laughs> Lacrosse. It's like hockey, but it's on grass. You know, you're, you're following uh, Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, and George W. Bush, who have all w. gone to the. To the uh, Obama to the, didn't do that. He no. did not go to the. He did not. That's go. crazy. Why not? Yeah, I didn't like uh, NASCAR. Not a fan of uh, racing, maybe. Probably know. because they waste so much fuel. It is and true. He was worried about the emissions. It is true. It's a lot of fuel. Big carbon footprint for what? Just so you can enjoy yourself? That doesn't seem right. You know who I'm going to nominate? <laughs> What do they call that when they get like a famous person? They make them so and so of the race. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Grand Marshal. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna make Greta Thunberg the Grand Marshal of the race. <laughs> How dare you? Get in your speedboat. How dare you? You can drop the checkered flag. I won't be there. You know, we do have a new I form of... I should be in school. We have Formula E. Those, those are all electric vehicles. They oh, make no noise. Fun. In the middle of it, the drivers, you have to have two because uh, the car won't make the whole race. So in the middle of the race, it's actually kind of fun. The drivers have to stop, get out, get in the other car, buckle in but and no go. Noise? And they'd be like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah they'd be, they'd play that uh, yakety sax. Yeah. That's fun, though. The no yeah. yeah. What is it without... Well, here's the thing. It's been pointed out to me on the NASCAR podcast <laughs> that I'm on with Doug Turnbull and... Five to go, right? Five to go. That you could always just put noises in there, right? 
Yeah, if you had electric NASCAR, fuel, you're not... you could you know, you got to smell that fuel. Yeah. You got yeah, have, to know. You have to be hurting the environment in order for racing to really feel it's the good. The only I agree. way that it's, it's fun. It's the only, it's just, <laughs> and besides, I don't like dinosaurs. I mean, listen, have you ever met one? Yeah, they're not nice. So I like using dead dinosaurs for my Sunday afternoon enjoyment. And if you can't get with that, man, then you're not invited to my party. Well, oh, timely music. This Alan Hunt, who flies this spaceship, he's on it because we have Jay Black in. What do you do around here? You're a sports director, yeah, is that what they call you? Something like sports that, yeah. director Jay Black, because I saw that there are some rules changes that Braves fans might want to know about before we start this 2020 season. Here's one that I like. Okay. Uh, they, uh, there's, it's against the rules to completely melt down in the first <laughs> inning of a playoff oh, really? game. So that really should help Braves So fans. what happens if you're starting to melt down? Uh, they just call you, the game. Just start back over? They start oh, over right. again. They re- it's called the baseball reset now. Sweet. Or the Braves rule. As, so what are, I don't even know. I just saw the headline. I thought, well, I better get Jay Black in. Is it three major changes? So the so the major, the, the majorest of the major changes. <laughs> majorest of the majors. Yes. Is that starting this year, pitchers, if they come into the ball game, have to now pitch to at least three batters oh. or or get to the end of the inning which I el- like that eliminates the bringing in one dude mm-hmm. to face one lefty he gets one out and then his day is over now my guess pull. is some of this is about speeding up the game every time you bring in a pitcher yes. they have to warm up it's another commercial break the games are going on too long people have no attention spans any longer that is that Just is for television the, right the, it's for television and the, that is the major reason why they have this rule. I and think another part of that, though, is it takes a... Look, I don't mind analytics, but it's getting a little too much. So it takes a little bit that... Uh, you know what? You're paid to manage. I'm, manage the game. I'm, I, I'm a, I like this rule for the reason that you shouldn't be a major league pitcher if you're only required to get one person out. Right. It's a, oh, he's a, he's a lefty. We'll bring this guy in and it gets this one batter. Yeah, yeah it's lefty, boring. lefty. It's but it's, it, but you like it, Jerry? But it takes away strategy. I, if you, I hate it's, this it's role. It's anti No, there's and, more strategy necessary. Yes, I, I, I think there takes is. takes away analytics. There is more strategy, and it makes people who can get both lefties and righties out That's right. way it, more valuable. There you well, go. there you go. So I... I I don't mind the speeding up the mid inning pitching tra- change just slows and, the game down. So a, I'm fine with getting rid of that, but I do like the fact that all right, all right, pitcher, you're now required to do more than just come in, throw five pitches, and your day is done, and you make one point five million dollars. Maybe we'll get ambidextrous <laughs> pitchers from now on. You well, can throw left and right hand. Well, there was Bernie one. Sanders. You're getting angry that somebody's making <laughs> a million dollars. All the money they make. <laughs> there was there was a guy and he's still in the minor leagues who is actually ambidextrous. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, he he does. He is a switch pitcher. Switch, switch pitcher. pitcher. Yes, he's oh, a switch wow. pitcher. Yes, I can't. I can't remember his name. I knew somebody in college was like. That. He's not. <laughs> he's not he taught all that you great. A lot. But he, he has taught a, me a lot. He has a reversible glove. He has a reversible glove, yeah, so he can pitch on yeah, either side that's of the cool. That's what my friend used. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. So I'm so. I'm all for that. There's a couple of other rules. Um, about, about, <laughs> we are still talking about baseball. <laughs> right, that's one rule. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, um, yes. what ranch? <laughs> yeah. There is. Uh, it's now a 26 man roster. The major league player, major league teams can carry one more player okay. uh, during the regular season. They're getting rid of the uh, in September. You won't have a 40 man roster anymore. They're going to cut that back down to 28. That stinks too. Why does that stink, Jared Yamamoto? It's, it's awesome. A, a lot By of the way, the... noted high school pitcher Jared Yamamoto. Oh gosh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was yeah, great. He, yeah. he pitched on his high school he, team. He, he or... melted down a few times. Yeah, there were definitely his, a couple meltdowns on, on his for good sure. days. He was now very he's good. Now he's purely yeah. catcher. Yeah. 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 When are they going to retract the league so there's less teams and then? more talent and then more fast-paced baseball games. What he boy, that was very I thought that that was aggressive. You're not making the rules, are you, Jay? Uh, there there will be no retraction. Exactly, there will not be. No, but what made the September expansion of the roster to 40 teams was you got a 40 people. Get, to 40 people was you got a chance to see the prospects that were coming up in the system. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if when the Braves were terrible a couple of years ago. Why do you have to see that? That's it's enough well, for the, the team to I'm see. I'm a fan it. of baseball. There's so that's no why I want to go see it. There's no reason why you can't put those players on the roster. They're just not going to be all active right. for every game in September, which I'm fine with because it was really, to me, it's really silly that for five months of the year, you only have 26 guys. And then when we get to October or September, you can play half the organization, yeah. Yeah. which means you have 20 pitchers available. So this is a, this brings a little Tighten more strategy. Things up a little bit. Tightens things up a little bit. So there's two well, things having to do with pitchers. Any, yes. any rule changes not to do with pitchers? Uh, 
Not really. Okay, what's the next one? Then? <laughs> oh, they cut the they cut the amount of time you have to challenge by two seconds. Uh, yes. So we're we're, we're going to tighten that up just a hair, so that'll that'll help speed up the game. Now, who does that t- the, the two seconds less to challenge or to think if you want to challenge? Because okay, what I because once they start looking at the monitors, you know, well, what I it's, find interesting? it's not even it's not even looking at the monitor. It's we stop the game. So the manager and his guy up in the press box who's watching television can wait and look in the replay I see. and see if we want to ch- I'd get rid of that altogether. That's right. There's yeah. no, you, it you, should be something the manager or somebody you saw down with in the your field own two sees eyes. or the player says, look, you need to challenge that. And you're right. Add a little. Why, why should you be so certain about it? it should be, there should be an element of I'm going to get this wrong or I'm going to get this right. That's what makes the, the game better. Right? I used to be a fan of replay, and I am to the point of – to fix the obvious errors, but the way it has gone now, where especially in a basketball game, where we stop it for I, every the, I was gonna so bring, I was, second. Look, I was going to bring this up. The NBA has the worst oh. replay because the the ref goes over and it's basically like he borrows a TV from somebody else. <laughs> they have to pick it up, turn it around. Do they wheel like, it hey, in from like the media it's room? Almost, it's high school? Almost, it's yes. almost like that. There's a there, you, there can't just be a monitor over there that they can walk up to. Somebody has to. Is that all of all three? Yeah, that's that. We're pretty much done there. How about that uh, NHL player had a heart yeah. attack on the bench? He's, what do they call are, a heart episode? Yeah, a, a heart, heart ep- event. A heart event. I think that's a heart attack. What, what other event do you have with your heart that you have to go to the hospital? <laughs> I'm not meant- It's an attack of some kind. All right, Jay Black, thanks for explaining to us. Uh, I didn't get the Braves rule. You're still allowed to melt down in the first inning. Yeah, of that, that did not pass. Playoff. Uh, thank you, sports director at WSB, uh, Jay Black. See you. Very uh, thankful. <laughs> 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 hey, yeah, he's hey, got a reason to be frustrated. Let's start, start that over again. Because that could have been. Well, can you stop it and start it or no? Sometimes it's difficult with these uh, music that we come in and out of because it's on a, a rotation. You have a reason to be flustered. I'm a little. Yeah, I have a reason I'm in to the be same flustered. Boat. All right, let's pretend we're just coming back now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I have my microphone turned the right way, I want to thank the people from Zero Mile. Katie. Katie especially. Yeah. I want to thank uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Stadium. And I want to thank AEG because uh, they just came in here with a Rolling Stones package and invited me to the show. Whoa, really? Me and a guest. I got one of those too. And by the way, I just put an order in for like eight tickets, so... Oh, I got two, no, I'm going with a bunch of people. And we're gonna do uh like remember when David Byrne oh, yeah. uh, took the next day off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the whole deal. Awesome. The whole deal. It's gonna be a whole office affair. This uh, Rolling Stones show. July 9th. So, I Mercedes guess I should Benz. mention it's July yeah. 9th and the pre orders are on now. Pre sales going on today. Pre sales. And then I don't know what pre sales means. It means so, like if you like if everybody can do it. Uh, well, if you have, oh, Ameri- you have to have the code. So American Express did one yesterday. Yeah. There's other ones going on today. So I have the code and I can't if you, tell if you get if you email. know the code. If you get the email, you know yeah, the code. Yeah. Right. Got it. But the general on sales tomorrow at 10 a.m. Well, there's lots of seats. I'm sure you should be able to. Yeah. I, it's, you know, I saw them in 2015. They were great. Was it 2015 they were at Bobby Dodge? Bobby Dodge, yeah. And, and they were great. And I thought, this surely is going to be the last time I see them. No, that, so this time I'm really, I'm really convinced that this is, <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to see them. I didn't, think, knows? I didn't think they were going to tour after the dates they did last year. I thought they were done yeah. with America for a minute, but here they are. 15 they are. dates. This the last is one is in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the other cool part. Atlanta is the last show on that tour, at least now, unless they add more. Yeah. You don't, that, go ahead. That, I was just going to say, you don't think Mick and the guys are going to last long enough to watch the hologram tour that will eventually yeah. happen? <laughs> <laughs> They'll still just be able to sit and watch. You know what? I might actually go to that. I might actually go to that one. You know, I don't know. Keith Richards is my life coach. Yeah, yeah. I have the Keith call. Uh, I hit the Keith call. No matter where he is, he shows up here at my uh, my, my beck and call. So it's David Lynch and he's interviewing a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that, huh, Keith Richards? Oh, hey, Eric. Hey, man. How are you? I was hey, just watching that. I'm gonna see, I was cordially invited to see uh, the show in Atlanta this year. Oh, you year. got my invitation. I got your invitation. <laughs> and the Keith. hat and the, yeah. and the <laughs> thing there. I, oh, that's You know, they I got, got a scarf. Yeah, the whole scarf. deal. I had to pay for that. Mick would make me pay for that. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> you know how cheap. Mick, Mick's not going to leave any money on the table. Well, I gave but mine to you. You're man. the man of the people, yeah. Keith. Are you you gonna, and Nick. I, mean, I got one question for you. Sure. Are yeah. you going to rock and roll when you get to Atlanta? Oh, we're going to rock hard. Man. All right. You go back to wherever you were, oh, doing whatever you were Netflix. doing. Netflix. 
right. I, think you, I think you were going to say, yes, this is an extension of the no filter tour to have yes. last year. Yeah. Which uh, I'm familiar with that uh, stage setup is like five huge Massive. screens. It doesn't matter where you are in the tall. venue. It doesn't matter where you are in the venue with the Stones. They still opening with Sympathy uh, for the Devil? Oh, I don't they know. were. They were in. Yes. Yeah. Although, uh, Sympathy for the Devil is not a good, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not a cruncher. The Rolling Stones. Yeah. That's usually how they start. Whereas that's a real kind of pop, 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 yeah. pop, 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 the crowd gets excited, the lights go down. I don't see that one. Whereas no. uh, Start Me Up, many times you see him, you hear. Uh, if you hit that, it's going to be. Nothing yeah. like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Rolling Stones. And Keith uh, walks what? out there with that smile. No, <laughs> he's sorry, Keith. Up. Sorry, Keith. Up again. God, I didn't mean to bring you in. Yeah, this is, I think, how it's opening. So the lights slowly go uh, down. I can see cool. The screens yeah, kind of right. come alive. But at what point do you go, ladies and gentlemen? The Rolling Stones. Up to the post. I guess. Hey, maybe there's a maybe there's some kind of film intro, like a historical. Yeah, yeah they usually do thing. that now. Yeah, that's the old day. Hey, we were young once. Yeah. Take a look at this. McCartney does that too. You yes. know, there was yes. there was a time when young ladies would get so excited at Stone shows that the uh, theater would would run yellow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Nowadays, the ladies just can't control their bladder. No, well, I, I think there's less of it now. <laughs> less of it. There's less of it now because more of the crowd is just naturally wearing adult diapers. Hey, paint it back. Paint it back. Paint it back. If you hey, want. listen to me. I'm going to tell you something about the Rolling Stones logo. It will never cease to be cool. No. It will never cease. Uh, 17-year-olds will gravitate toward that tongue forever. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Ramones. Watch out. It's like the Ramones. Same thing. Like the Ramones yep. logo will never cease to be cool. Yes. If you want to see an excited Eric, go to our Instagram or our Facebook, yeah. and you can see uh, yeah. he's just he's glowing. He's got a nice uh, Rolling Stone scarf on, and you don't see in the picture, but he's got a nice Rolling Stones hat on. I had put the hat glowing. on. You're glowing. I'm You're glowing. glowing. You're, You're so glowing. excited. I don't know if people know this, but I'm a I'm a big Stones fan. I don't know if I've made that clear or not. Uh, uh, he's here. Yeah. So it must be time for this. Outrage corner. That's here. outrageous. <laughs> With English news. He's here. Him. That guy. Did I say he or yeah. she? You said he. Are you transitioning? No, I am still. Look, I want to show respect for you. You know, I'm getting so the Me Too era and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm. So, I got so much to lose, English Nick. I'm 55 years old. I, I got to make this last. I got to make it work. I got to keep the money so I can retire. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so when the uh, what, Katie, yeah. when she gave me the the, the Rolling Stone yeah. the free tickets. I said, uh, I'd hug you if it wasn't for the Me Too. And she said, oh, give me a hug. So yeah, she's a hugger. Like, you did yeah. a very, I saw you in the camera. Yeah. You did a very courteous side hug. Well, you know that I'm the, I'm the you king do, of that. You have those long arms. So yeah. You hug from the side, but then you reach <laughs> across I, to the, you know. I invented the, the non-creepy hug. Just don't reach too far. No, but yeah. I, I invented the non-creepy hug. You go yeah. from the side and you, you guys, the hands, you just, it should not land anywhere of any kind of import. The hands should just be in plain the sight. Just the hands should be in plain sight at all times. I put the, the, do the fist so you can't, you know, mm. that's never, <laughs> you can't massage anything with a fist. So, so no one can right claim anything. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, this is. Uh, I'm sorry to eat. I'm sorry to. Uh, no, no. I mean, Dr. Dr. Stones. Big sorry deal. to eat up uh, uh, all of this. But yesterday, it was yesterday, the day before. Maybe it was Monday. I came around a corner. We have the most dangerous corners. Very long hallways, mm -hmm. and you can come around a corner and boom, you're right in somebody's Blind face. Spot. Blind spots. Yeah. I come around the corner before the show, <laughs> and I run right into Marcy from America, uh, Atlanta's Morning News. Yeah. And it was like one of those things where I had to kind of steady myself, and I put my hand on her shoulder. And I was mm. doing my laps, and it kept on, uh-oh, I touched a woman in the workplace. So I actually went up to her afterward and said, hey, uh, I, I just want you to know I touched you on the shoulder. She goes, I didn't even remember it. <laughs> I, like, I'm more paranoid about it. Yeah, you're it. sensitive. Yeah. I don't, I got a lot you to gotta lose. You got to be. I, don't need... I know, you know, um, Clark Howard did something similar to me. He uh -oh. asked Ooh. if oh. he could open the door or something. There oh, was yeah. something about opening a door or saying that some compliment to me that he was afraid to give because mm. of the... You know the environment. Me too. Do you know what? Do you, you know what he uh, saved on that? Eight dollars mm -hmm. and a penny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you got the outrage. Got that penny. I do have an outrage. Hackers are demanding nude photos to unlock files in a new ransomware scheme targeting women. They said, "Send us uh, pictures of your breasts," or you know. So this is ransomware. You say the headlines very fast. You I know, a headline, a headline needs to be kind of you know. This is what's happening. It's not conversational. Yes. So what's happening here? So ransomware. Ransomware. They're saying they like, usually they ask for a Bitcoin yeah. or something like that. Now they're saying uh, we want to, so they focus Naked on photos. ladies. Yes. Do they even know what these photos are going to look like? I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it takes all sorts. <laughs> oh, we like different styles of. Hold on. Let me lift body. this up. 
Jay. What are you doing? Hey. Linda. Hold this mirror for me. You know how they <laughs> brought lights into that. the pyramids? It's been 20 years. Put that back down. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think this is probably kind of, uh, you know, hackers have a sense of humor, too. I don't think that, uh, given the fact, I don't know, I think most hackers understand that uh, there's a lot of free nudity already available online. Absolutely. So if you're going to go through the, uh, what it takes to become one of these ransomware people, also, if you get caught, there's the possibility of jail time. So if you're going to go through all that, I think you're going to want money. I would imagine this is something that's well, been discovered saying, like, as a bit of a joke. Yeah. But they're also they're, they, this thing pops up on your screen, and they won't get rid of it unless you send them the boobs. Now, so. I know people who have been. Uh, there's a lot of different things with the ransomware. Uh, there was some of them are social. What do you call that? Social engineering, or you know, a lot of times they just there's a fear that everybody has, and you don't have to know specifics. It's like that old game they used to play when telephones were landlines. You would call oh, somebody yeah. in the middle of the night, and you'd say, uh, "I know who you are, and I saw what you did," and hang up the phone. And you, for most Freak people, most people have a secret. They've done something, yeah. and to hear something like that, and so a lot of times with the ransomware, they'll just say, "Hey, I saw that porn you were looking at, and I'm going to tell the police, or Didn't I'm going to tell you your got wife." Something like that, where it's like I turned your camera on and your yeah, laptop, yeah. and I saw you. <laughs> yeah. First of all, they didn't know how savvy I was. Well, hmm. first of all, I never, I, I do not partake in the low arts of well, pornography also you, never, you gotta be careful with the dating apps too because those people like you, this may be somebody that says he's interested in you you he wants a new picture next thing you know he's saying yeah send me some money or i'm gonna expose yeah. these or new first pictures first of all first of all who is sending uh pictures of themselves nude to strangers not Don't a know. smart thing. Not really. Not a really smart thing. Well, if it's a good Tinder date, <laughs> it might sense. Uh, <laughs> just really something you need to be offering up before yeah, but, the first date. Yeah, but you have to have met the person first, right? Yeah, a couple days. Days. Uh, you'd be surprised. Sometimes. It depends on what people are looking for. You spend a half days. an hour and then you decide if you want to send. No, a new that was the one, uh, and I knew exactly because I'm the only podcast that I watch or listen to are tech ones, and Radio Labyrinth and One Topic no, yeah. and PowerPod. Yeah. But other than that. It's sure. all text when you're done stuff. with those three. So I have a Yahoo uh, e email account from 2001, and it was my main one. And then when I went Gmail, now the Yahoo account is anytime I sign up for anything where I know I'm gonna get a whole bunch of stuff, I put Give it on it the Yahoo. Yahoo, so I can just kind of my filter. It's your dummy account. Yeah, my it's not really dummy. There's stuff in there that matters. Some of it is bills okay. and stuff. I just don't want that stuff coming in my other. And uh, so I guess remember a few years ago they got hacked and like th millions of people's passwords. Mm -hmm. And well, they told you the next week, if you have a Yahoo account, change your password. That's what I did a week later. So like a year after that, you get this, I got this email that if I didn't know better, you know, say, hey, this is the password to your Yahoo mail. All <laughs> right. Boom. So we got in there and then it says, I was able to get a hold of your uh, video camera. And so I know the porn you were looking at Shut and I up. turned on your video camera and I've developed, how, long, how many hours per person would this take? <laughs> I've developed a side by side of you <laughs> on camera and the porn that you were looking at. But the thing is, if you don't know any better, you'd see that they've got your, your yeah. password and you think, and also they don't know that I put a, uh, I put a piece of electrical tape over all cameras on all electronics that so I have. paranoid. I'm not paranoid. paranoid. You know, you actually can turn them on remotely sometimes for good reasons, and there's no reason for anybody to see that. Well, you don't want to FaceTime your I'm folks. Not, in not, the news. By the way, I'm not protecting myself. I'm protecting others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next to outrage. All right. It was like, thank you. I thank you. I did not it. want to see that. No. So a comparison of OK Boomer to a racial slur in a university classroom is sparking outrage. This is the University of Oklahoma. Who's being outraged? Why? Now, OK Boomer is a slur that millennials use because they can't win any arguments with anybody older than them. So they come up with a clever little slur. Right. Well, so they, that way, they go, OK Boomer, they can roll their eyes and, you know, go find what Trevor Noah told them to think about the <laughs> next topic. This college professor uh, compared that to the N-word. Saying it was equally as offensive as the N-word. Okay, but were people offended because he said the N-word rather than saying because the N-word? Because he said the N-word in, in class, yes. Oh, God oh. forbid, free speech does, you know, it should be limited. Because those kids, well, and I know they're all listening to rap and all their favorite music has <laughs> the word in it nine billion <laughs> times. But to hear it from a professor, <laughs> yeah. So it's faux outrage. Dr. Peter Gade. Oh, yeah, you, you know what? Canceled. Also, yep. not only should he be fired, um, any pension that he has given should be taken away from him and uh, whatever, you know, put, put his face out there and really humiliate him because he's not just a guy who is giving a course, a lesson. You know, it's, it's absurd. He's teaching. People are getting in so much trouble now 
for stupid things, for saying things in a free country where you have free. You're supposed to go to college to be challenged. Did you know that? Does anybody recognize that? <laughs> you're supposed to go to college. No, I want to know. So I already your, know. So that your ideas are challenged. <laughs> no, I'm going there for the parties, man. No one was ever harmed by hearing a full word. When I say the N word, guess what the first thing you think of? The full word. So saying the actual word cannot have any more of an effect than <laughs> saying the N-word. That's a fact, but uh, people would lose their power if that word got out. The Von Hessler Doctrine. They have such a beautiful chemistry. Making listeners laugh every day. The world could use a little more of that these days. 9 to noon on 95.5 WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. All right. Uh, Give me another outrage real fast here. Well, the headline reads, <laughs> the head, this is from the East Bay Times. They're good. Appalling. Outrage after Luke Perry left out of Oscars in memoriam tribute. Because they did Kobe. Oh, yeah, they did Kobe in the Oscars. Well, Kobe's death was noted. And yeah. Kobe won an Oscar, by yeah. the way. Uh, and they got Kirk Douglas in there. Luke Perry. You know what? I don't believe anybody's actually outraged. Appalling. You know what's Appalling. When a woman is stoned to death by a crowd because her husband cheated on her. That happens in Pakistan. That's pretty appalling. That's appalling. The fact that they forgot to include someone in a memoriam video doesn't qualify as appalling. Hour three of the Von Hessler Doctrine begins uh, right now. I think there's a story out there that is... uh, not really being reported correctly. And I don't have any information that other people don't have except for my 55 years of wisdom. The coronavirus. My experience. Uh, the coronavirus? That yes. The st- That's the story. What are you, reading minds now? Or do, I don't understand. Is this a Kreskin act? What well, you- There's I, someone I'm, here, Eric. Uh, there's someone here. Uh, someone very close uh, to you. So I'm, I'm seeing a B. Is there, do you know anybody with a B in their name? I'm, I'm seeing a, a it, C it, or does, a, maybe an 8. Does it have to start with a B? No, the, just a, anybody. Do you know anybody anything, with the letter anybody, B? Just as, yeah, does the letter B really have, have a significance Anybody for you? that's ever said anything that had the letter B in it in your life? <laughs> my aunt got stung by a yes, B. Yes, that's my guy. How do you know? <laughs> I have Aunt B. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's this. Uh, the reporting basically is that, oh my goodness, there's been a big jump out of China, the number of people who have coronavirus. A big jump. A big one day jump. I don't think that's what's happening. Uh, when you have one party state, they control all information. And when something like this breaks out, the first thing they do is start lying. And nine times out of ten, they can contain the thing so that once it's contained, nobody cares and the big lie can be what it is. So when the coronavirus broke out, they started off not by trying to contain the virus. They contained the physicians who let people know there was a virus. See, they wasted a month arresting physicians and people who were sounding alarms and making them write letters of contrition, and they lost control of the virus. I believe what's happening is the beginning of the Chinese telling us the numbers they knew all along. Because what happens here is sometimes the event outgrows the government lie. So that's what I think is going on here. I don't think all of a sudden you're getting, oh my, in 24 hours we have this X, it's growing by 10 times. No. The idea is one party state realizes the event is bigger than the government lie. So let's start releasing numbers so that, say, within seven days, we line up with reality. Because this isn't going to stop, and, and we're not... You know, it's like Iran with the, uh, the downing of the commercial airliner. First, the big government lie, and if they could have contained that and no one but between the international press and people who had relatives on the plane, within three or four days, it was like, no, okay, bite the bullet. The event is bigger than the government lie. If you're a one-party state, almost all events remain contained and smaller than the government lie. I think that's what's happening in China. They're going to have to get real with their numbers because the event got bigger than the government lie. The Von Hessler Doctrine, teaching more in the first seven minutes of the third hour than the competition does in three months. (laughs) Let's do this. Even more headlines for Thursday, February 13th. Even more. I'm still so appalled by Luke per- Perry being left out of that memoriam on the Oscars. Oh, but I will try. You know, that's what people don't understand. We, we throw around, I was appalled and outrage. Uh, when you're appalled, when you're outraged, out, it does happen to us a few times in life. 
you're shaking and for some reason you can't talk? Is he going to stand up to that person and let them know? And then all you go to speak and your jaw is locked or something? That's outrage. So it won't kill you? It only happens to you a few times in an entire lifetime. It doesn't happen, happen seven times a news cycle. But words don't mean anything anymore. Happens to me all day on Twitter. Ah. I'm out. Did you just tell me that you blocked Trump and Bloomberg yep. on your Twitter feed because they won't stop fighting with each other? Yeah, I don't want that. People retweet them, and then you get their hot take, and then I'm tempted to jump in. I just yeah. don't want it. Uh, suffice to say, they were really good friends for a long time. Yeah. People forget. Everybody loved Trump before he came down the escalator and said the the, the the raping and all that. Someone's doing it. Ra- rappers loved Trump. Business people loved Trump. Celebrities. Didn't you tell me there's an old thing? Fat kids, Bloom- skinny kids, kids who climb on rocks. All people loved Trump before he came down the escalator. And unless you really, really knew him, maybe some people didn't like him. But didn't you tell me there's a, a golf outing? Michael Bloomberg, Donald Trump, Billy Crystal. And actors, Clinton. Clinton. <laughs> All yeah. smiling. Hey, yeah. <laughs> we like golf. <laughs> yeah. People forget. Everybody always hated Trump. No, it wasn't that way at all. Snoop Dogg loved Trump till he came down the elevator. Yeah. Didn't Snoop Dogg have to apologize to Gail King? He did. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if we ever played the original audio. If I dig it up here, I mean, nah, that it's odd. You see, it's you know, it's just silly. Yeah, it's old news. Yeah, it's old news. If it's old news, I press Snoop. Snoop Dogg forgot that he was actually. <laughs> Excuse me, what's that? If it's old news, I press snooze. Uh, I like Just that. like, you know, learning on. about World War II or whatever. Yeah, I'm snooze. Like, whatever, old news. Nothing to be learned there. No, Snoop Dogg. Cuban Chris, Missile French Revolution. Who cares? <laughs> old news. The Cuban French Missile Revolution. Whatever, crisis. Who knows? Uh, yeah, uh, so Snoop Dogg got mad because Gail King of CBS This Morning, who's one of the only people who's actually doing any kind of journalism with their interviewing over the last couple of years. Uh, she was interviewing Lisa Leslie, is that her name, from WNB? She's a WNB NBA superstar. I don't think she still plays. But she and and uh, Kobe were good friends. And Gail King does an interview, and as part of the interview, said, well, you're a woman. What do you think about the stuff that went down in Colorado? And uh, Snoop goes, you know, we can't do this to our own people, which is completely wrong. When you're a journalist, you know you're a good journalist because you ask the same questions to everybody. And if you don't do that, that's how you know you're not a good journalist. And then LeBron James, who's a great basketball player, but not not so smart when it comes to world events, I have to tell you. Just a total millennial, you know. And he puts this thing up there, protect Lisa Leslie. As uh, Jason Whitlock said... Very smart man that he is. Having to endure a couple of uncomfortable questions does not make you a victim. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That is not, again, a a victim would be my same thing that about uh, what's really appalling. A woman being stoned to death by a crowd because her husband cheated on her. And that still happens in this world. Happens in Pakistan. It diminishes people who are truly a victim. Right. Right. The idea that you had to endure a couple of awkward questions does not put you in the arena of possibly maybe kind of being victimized. But protect Lisa Leslie. So finally, Snoop Dogg, I think Susan Rice, actually did put a tweet out and said, back the F off or else. Woo. She knows a lot of powerful people. So Snoop Dogg realized, oh, she worked for Obama. Now I've upset Obama. Now what have I done? Uh, So he, he finally... But it's like, people are not self-aware. Dude, you're bullying a 62-year-old black female journalist. That's what you're doing. Oh, I forgot. I got so twisted up inside of this whole thing, I forgot what I was actually doing. Here's the truth. Whether you're white, black, Asian, other, indigenous peoples, doesn't matter. Gail King did nothing wrong in the interview with Lisa Leslie. Kobe Bryant was a public figure. He lived a public life. Colorado and the events that happened in Colorado are part of that life. You are no journalist if you try to cover that up. That would be the opposite or skirting it. The other part of Kobe Bryant's story is how he responded as he grew into an adult and the karma of daughters, right? 
and the kind of father he became. But you don't get the beauty of that unless you look at the whole story. And no one who's African-American should be walking around with the mistaken belief that journalists who are black should treat black people different than... No, a good journalist looks at the world and asks the same questions of everybody in any facet of power or relation. There was a time when you didn't have to give that little speech, but I guess that time is behind us. <laughs> Better be careful. Sird. People are going to come get you, Eric. Oh, well, yeah. It's Susan Rice. I'd be worried if she said she was going to take care of something. <laughs> she's really connected. She's connected. Yeah. No, but I think what happened was Snoop Dogg was like, wow, if I upset her, I'd probably upset Obama. And I'm out there saying how you're treating. But it never occurred to Snoop Dogg that he was bullying publicly and yeah. in a veiled way threatening a 62-year-old black female journalist. Uh, Snoop, we're going to have to have a blunt summit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll roll. Could Obama get high now if he wanted to? Sure, he could. Yeah, he gets everybody with the phones. Oh, yeah, he's at his house. At, you know that real nice house yeah, that they just bought. There's probably people with the iPhone 11s hanging yeah, out of he helicopters. Care? What's going to happen to him if he gets high? No, he's not going to lose his Netflix saying, well, deal. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's up there on a pedestal. I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. Yeah, what if he opens up too much, like around his, his secret service that he still has with him? He's secret just... services, did they do not tell on you. No. Mm -mm. Secret service sees all kinds of stuff. Uh, one of the kids during his presidency was at a music festival yeah, Coachella. backstage, and there's a picture taking of her passing a joint or getting a Token poison. Uh, and um, that did not come out of the secret service. They were there. They saw it. They don't. It's not their job to... They were there to protect. I like the fact that the right wing, oh, see? Oh, what, that a teenager smoked a joint at a rock concert? Must have, must have something to do with his <laughs> economic policies. <laughs> see that uh, Joe Biden's on The View up there. Hey, man. Hey, what? what uh, hey, your dad is a good man. Uh, not man. like the guy we got in there now. <laughs> hey, look, poopy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, Jay. Uh, Where, Jay uh, where's Jay Boyhar? Yeah, Jay. 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 Jay, Jay Boyhar. Hey, let me hey, tell you. Let me, hey. If you're talking about hey. the uh, industrial revolution, yes. I mean, we had cars. We had we had coal. Yeah. Now and then the younger dress. It when, was good then. It was good then. It was good. Now the younger dress when that uh, comet hit. Yeah. I mean, we need that again. As long as this. I mean, you know. <laughs> I can count on Whoopi and her yeah. and her friends. Yeah, down in South Carolina. And whenever time I see Joe Biden, dude, he's like a pre I just think of him. Come on, black people. Come on, come, come on, on, black people. Come on, we help got, out Uncle we Joe. We got to stop those come billionaires. On. We got a billionaire in there now. We got another guy who thinks he can buy it. He run a commercial. Hey, look. Hey, who? who hey, come hey, on. Who, who had Barack's back? Come on. Many women on this. We need America to look like Petticoat Junction. Joe, three o three. Three, I'm just getting started. Help me in this fight. As yeah. my uh, producer, Jared Yamamoto, told me, uh, the thing to remember here is, okay, so I believe Buttigieg walks out of Iowa with one more delegate. Than, two, two more. Two yeah. more than Bernie. Uh, Bernie is going to end up with more by some number than... It's going to be a tie in New a Hampshire. A tie in New Hampshire. But South Carolina, and I don't know about... I looked up Nevada. I think Nevada... I don't think... Nevada is winner take all. It is not. Which is strange because they, they have Vegas. They have Vegas. Yeah. What do you think of there? Right. Take -all. South Carolina's winner take all. 54, right? That's correct. So if Joe Biden has a firewall in South Carolina before Super Tuesday, he could dwarf the number of delegates that either Bernie or. Uh, Let's just Mayor say I'll have more. I don't want to use that word dwarf. It makes people upset. Oh, you don't like that, huh? Used to be okay, right? But not now. Hey, these Used days be... you can only say things. Hey, shorty. Hey, no. <laughs> That's like people <laughs> seem to like that. All right, you got a story for me? What are we doing here? You know what? I have two. What are we for doing you? here? I've got one for you. Any? I don't I'm, mean I'm, metaphysically. I mean right now in this segment. I'm really interested in this bill that's in, that's been introduced in Illinois to ban people from pumping their own gas. Yeah, in Illinois, uh, some. It was a Democrat in the state house or in the their their lower house, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, she decided that uh, her name is Camille Lilly. No, they a already Democrat have it. From Oak Park, Illinois. They already have Oak Park. I believe it's just outside of Chicago. I I was in Oak Park once. Strangely enough, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, why do you ask that way? Well, what is, is Oak Park is known night? for places? You say I was in Chicago. It's like okay, you had a lot to do there, but Oak Park <laughs> is kind of small and specific. I believe, if I do remember, if I was in the right place, 
uh, when I was working for the advertising agency, we used to go to uh, these uh, expos, right? And we'd have a booth, and we'd have advertising B-roll that you could buy if you were one of these uh, sort of swimming hey, pool If that places. guy had a focus no, crossing the street, we got pool. it for you. <laughs> it's a, it was a swimming pool footage if you, had a, if you were selling swimming pools for oh. television commercials. And I believe the convention center was in Oak whatever. Oak Park. What a great memory. It, it actually is like in. Yeah. So I never really actually, So I had to go there and do work and set stuff up. That was the first time that I dealt with unions in my life. And I said, well, I don't want to be a part of anything that's this. I'll tell you my Oak Park story. So we have a little booth we have to set up, right? And I bring, we're, we're a very small booth. I'm basically alone. I have the two suitcases I need to set up. And you pull up to the convention center and there's like six or seven or eight other cars. And we had like a passenger van I was in. And I get out, and the union guy says, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, just put it here. We'll... And he points to where the booth is. I, I said, I can see it. It's right there. Literally, it was like 20 feet away, and there's like 10 cars ahead of me. And the guy goes, no, we'll take it over for you. I said, hey, thanks a lot, man, but it's right there. I'll just take it myself. He said, no, you won't. Put it down. I said, look, man, I'm just going to go over and set up the booth. You're paying to be there. He said, do you want electricity? Put it down. So I had to put it down, wait an hour for the guy to bring it over. It took me a minute to walk to the to the booth, and that's one of the that was I was at the transition point in my life there of what I was thinking politically, and when I said, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a part of anything that encourages that person to say to because I would have given him ten dollars to let me just walk past. But no, if I let you do it, before you know it, everybody's taking this. Oh, my God. God forbid. People take their own stuff to the booth, <laughs> and you're out of a job. And that's kind of what this is. Yeah. Because so, they already do have self-serve. She wants to bring it back so that you have to employ people to put gas in your car as some sort of jobs thing. New Her- Jersey does that right now. You can't yeah. pump your own gas. And so, But she's hiding behind the fact that you can have fires. People don't know how to... Don't we have enough experience in this country that we, uh, we, we're pretty good at putting gas into our own vehicles? Her bill is called the Gas Station Attendant Act. It should be called the, uh, the Creating Jobs Where They Wouldn't Otherwise Exist Act. <laughs> Tim Andrews, I kind of surprised you with my take on that, did I not? No, it didn't surprise uh, me. I was just bringing it up. I think most people would think I'd be all for it. That's uh, Jussie Smollett, the actor who faked his whole, uh, tried to blame it on Trump people. Yeah, from Empire. Yeah, from Empire. And remember, the, the charges are basically dropped. And that upset everybody, and it was ridiculous. They shouldn't have been dropped, obviously. Everyone knew that the guy lied. But now, they've come back around and they've indicted him for basically the same crimes. In my, the way that I see it. Now, this Kim Fox, I don't know if she's still there. The person who... She is. I just read an article. Yeah, but they they created a different special prosecutor to go look at this particular case. Now, I think Jesse Smollett is, you know, I I think what he did is horrible. But, I, you know, this may obviously is not technically double jeopardy because they're going to cross their T's and dot their I's. But it sure does smell like double jeopardy to me. That the government can say, hey, the, the, we were so inept the first time around when we didn't indict you that we've decided to come back around and now we in. And they're suing him right now anyway. Well, whatever. I, I, this, this stuff could lead to jail time. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sorry. I just have to stand up in favor of uh, not, being, not giving the government the right to come back at you a second time. Look, if, you, if, the, if this Kim Fox was inept when she did that, you leave, I believe that that's an elected position. You leave that to the people. If they don't want her to be there anymore, they can decide. The gears of government grind slow, but they do grind on. And uh, I guess that's why I'm part of a, I'm a libertarian, so everybody I vote for never gets into office. But I have to stick to my <laughs> principles. I think Jussie Smollett, I think it was wrong for them to not charge him, but that's what the government came down and did. They did not charge him. And this is coming out of Chicago. So if it came out of the feds, you, you can, there's more of a firewall there for not being double jeopardy. It's a whole different group of prosecutors. But this is the same city government that doesn't charge you once and then comes back around and charges you? 
I think it was ridiculous they didn't do it the first time, but you shouldn't be able to come back at somebody because you feel like you were an inept do the first time around. Hey, you yeah. know what? We, yeah. we found out that that was a jury of dummies who said you were not guilty. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna drag you through court again. It would be the same type of thing. It's absurd. All right. What are we doing? You mentioned libertarian values. Uh, you, yeah. You see that uh, your boy, uh, Gary Johnson, he's uh, trying to recruit Tulsi Gabbard from the Democrats to run on the she's ticket with him. She's still running as the... Yeah, as she, a, hasn't, she hasn't given up her campaign still giving a, You know, I've got an idea for the next libertarian candidate. <laughs> Somebody who's actually been a libertarian. I, oh, and this would be wild. Even more wild than that. Somebody who actually tries to win. <laughs> now, I'm not... Silly. I'm not saying they will win, but you get a few times around the block of trying to win. You never know. In the age of Trump, what the hell? This is basically, if you, if you thought of it, this is how you know the Libertarian Party is failing upon failing upon failing. At its essence, a, a national candidate for the Libertarian Party basically would be a fiscal conservative and a social liberal. Just about where every damn American is. And that party can't figure out a way to get 20% of the vote. Unbelievable. <laughs> Let's do this. It's the stories we just couldn't miss. It's the Doctrine Extra. Here we got audio laid on the table. What do you got for me? Oh, I've got a, a local story, actually. A local you. story happened right From here. From Atlanta, Georgia? Right here in Atlanta, Georgia. When you say yeah, local, do you mean the state of Georgia or the actual metro Atlanta you know, area? It has ties to both. Really? There are ties to metro Atlanta and Georgia in general, too. Uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, think global, act local. That's right. So act local, pal. This, this comes from Channel 2 upstairs. So men Is that a news station? Yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a television station. Television. We do radio. They do right. Right. They're the beautiful yeah, I think television's overrated. I like Channel 2. But i got to tell you, just as a medium, I find television to be overrated. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's just radio with pictures. That, right, that's what ahead. I think. Uh, men posing as... This is television without pictures. That's what I want. <laughs> Isn't that what people want? Yeah. More television without pictures. That's radio. The promise of radio is still alive. All right, go ahead. All right. I promise I won't inter interrupt you again. Men posing. Because, you know, people don't like it when I interrupt you. <laughs> no, right, they go don't. Ahead. Men posing as. Eric, you really should pay more attention now to Now you're Eric's interrupting <laughs> him. I, well, I was just telling you something. I got you. I feel that way about adult films. I, I don't need the pictures, just the sound. Exactly. It's all about. Uh, you used to like oh, those. Oh, sometimes uh, the sound ruins. Those it. telephone things. Yeah. You know what I don't like in pornography back when hmm. I used to dabble humor i like humor in almost everything but pornography there's no place for humor nobody wants to laugh <laughs> in that situation if i want humor i'll bring in a mirror all right now go ahead <laughs> men posing as wu-tang clan members what does are... that get the coronavirus the wuhan no no wu-tang clan oh, okay they were a big wu-tang uh... wu yeah wu-tang not wu-han no not wu-han wu that's a wu-han clan big uh big going rap... around infecting everybody with the coronavirus that's right, All right. a big rap group there uh these folks are accused of scamming hotels out of more than a hundred thousand dollars for posing to be the wu-tang well, walked in like i'm rizza riz or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> basically who's yeah. that rizza riz RZA? method man RZA. the Jizza. method man one Raekwon. We met uh, the Riz, chef. Riz, uh, Riz, uh, we had Rizza on a radio. Really show. cool guy. Yep. He had made a movie, like some yeah, kind of kung fu, awesome. kind of kung fu movie or yeah. something. I don't know. I saw Method Man once uh, on, live on TV doing his show, and I thought, "Whoa, that guy scares me," because he was he was rapping about uh, uh, really just like kind of beating up this woman, and then uh, and then he stopped and he led the crowd in like a prayer. Uh -huh. Like a really religious Christian prayer, and then he went back to rapping about beating up this woman. And I thought, that's a dangerous dude, man. He's all over the map. Pick one. <laughs> Are you for peace and love? Or I don't. Anyway, so these folks, it, it kind of just proves, Eric, that all you have to do is kind of have the look. So these these folks would show up in a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And they hey, would we're go, the Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah, they just showed up. No need yeah. for I saw I saw the I saw the Lincoln Navigator. No need for a credit card. Yeah. They would show How does that work? They had a fake credit card All and right. they also had the look. They had the Wu Tang look and they would show up and they they scammed the Hyatt Regency in Atlanta, the Georgia Terrace Hotel, which is mm -hmm. right on the street from here. Really? And they, they also How does uh, the card I don't understand. The card either works or doesn't. Like so I I guess maybe they could afford the rooms. 
Yeah. So you get that, and then you keep charging on the card, or the tabs. They ran tabs of forty five thousand dollars and thirty nine thousand dollars at just the higher regions. Well, they're pretending to be Wu Tang Clan in yeah. nineteen or two thousand eight. Not the, oh, not 2000. these days. Yeah, not these days. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're still they're, they're holding on to their money these days. Hey, does that guy who's in jail, the pharmaceutical bro, what do they call him, uh, Pharma Bro? Shkreli. Does he still own, didn't he pay for one of their albums? They he made did. one album and he owns it? Yeah, he owns it and it's never been released. Ghostface Killer, that was another one, right? Yeah, he was oh, in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's still in jail, that uh, Pharma Bro. Yeah, he is. You know what he's in jail for? Being a D-bag. I'm convinced of it. Oh, yeah, that's it. I'm convinced of it. People, he's not, he didn't people, break any laws. People think that, well, he broke laws. People think he's in jail for raising the EpiPen or whatever up yeah. to 200. No. <laughs> they just pissed people off, and they went and found something else that he did and put him in jail. They didn't like him bragging about it. He was a D-bag, but I loved when he when he appeared in front of the House committee, and he just acted like a... He's like, yeah, what about you? <laughs> I just thought it was great. I always wanted somebody to go, well, so what are you? What's I mean, he was, in that sense, it was the dumbest thing he ever did because he brought all the, he wrote, there's a kid who's like 30 years old, gets a lot of money, gets a lot of power, and before he starts meeting with government representatives, unfortunately, read one too many Ayn Rand books, <laughs> decided he was going to be the guy. <laughs> now he's sitting in jail. All right, Dagny Tagger. Yeah, that's right. Warning, do not chug milk before listening, because you will laugh out loud. Milk was a bad choice. Eric and the Doctrinaires, mornings at 9. Mark Aram, evenings at 6 on 95.5 WSB. Why did you put Greg up on the big screen when he's not even on the show yet? Well, he's waiting in the bullpen. He's holding up signs. I know, he's holding up signs, not realizing he's up on the big screen with the, you know, tours walking around. And <laughs> Some people you just cannot dress up. You can dress them up. What is it? You can dress him up, but you can't take him out. I don't know. <laughs> Greg Rush, you can live with him, you can't live with him. I don't know. Can't live with him, can't live with him. You know what I'm saying. Something like that. I was going to bust out my voice, my new cliche voice, but no one will get it, so I decided not to. Hey, that doesn't bother me. The audience doesn't have to get every joke. I like a show. Don't you like to be watching a show where every once in a while you go, what was that about? Yeah. It makes the audience dig a little bit. That's the problem with radio. Is the, All the consultants have been just... You know, like they call people, what do you want to hear? And then the next day they just vomit it back at them. I want to hear more about Trump. Nothing wrong with uh, making the audience, you know, work a little bit. You can take that too far, but uh, what was that? I got to look that up. All right. By the way, that story you just said about the Wu-Tang Clan, the people yeah. who acted like the Wu-Tang Clan, and then they built local hotels for over $100,000. How? Why wouldn't somebody just Google them? Like. Were they lookalikes? How how difficult is this? Well, oh. it's all about the. I guess when you show up at a Rolls Royce and you have the right people around yeah, but you. But if you don't have the face, <laughs> hey, you're not Method Man. <laughs> you look like a guy named Al. I don't understand how it works. Too, do you sit down and you say, "I'm part of the Wu Tang Clan. Well, I'd all, like to order six lobsters, please." They must have all come in together. Yes. Like, okay, we're. But you know what? The, they have you, fake what does that cards. mean? You don't have First to have all, a. Credit yeah. card they had or? fake ones. They had fake ones, but here's the deal. Bands like that that are going through town, they don't just show up. Like the Stones. They don't just let us show up the night before. Hey, we're the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Can we book rooms? a room? <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. All right, what else you got? All right, I, I've got a good one for you. Uh, nearly one in three American workers run out of money before payday, even those earning over $100,000. What the hell are they spending their money on? Tim Andrews, do you run out of money before payday? I think no. Yeah, okay. I used to, but uh, I don't anymore. Why not? But my guess. I don't spend it all. My guess is <laughs> all these stories we get about uh, people. What one four hundred dollar crisis would put one and whatever. But my guess is they got either cable or satellite or some version of uh, sixty channels online. My guess is they've got whichever smartphone they would prefer to have in their pocket. So like all the things that people consider essentials before they recognize what the real essentials are, paying the mortgage, paying the rent, paying the utilities. Do people realize that's supposed to come before the smartphone? Do they understand no. this? <laughs> what are people spending this money on? What did you say? One in three? Yeah, one in three. I'm, avocado toast. I've got a personal story here. Fifteen dollars for a slice of avocado toast. Child care is really expensive. Okay, but that's not what we're talking about here. This is a thirty-six-year-old Amy. She okay. says child car care may be expensive, but you can't complain about it if you spent fifteen hundred dollars on a phone. Amy says priorities. Amy says that she runs out of cash all the time because, uh, especially during tax season. 
because uh, her husband and her, they just don't uh, mix their money around enough. What? what? It, 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 no it, sense. It, uh, words <laughs> just came out. Well, okay. I, I'm, it's a little mechanical. Slow down. Slow down. Whew. Broadcasting is about communicating ideas. Right. To a broad, And the way that this audience. CNBC article is written, it's a little, don't it's a little blame clanky. It on them. It is. Okay, All right, she says, I'll read, read it slowly. It. Okay. Amy, 36, is intimately familiar. Slow, slower. With running short on slower. cash. Slower. And you start over. Amy? Uh, Amy? How old is Amy? She's 36. Okay, great. Relax. Now tell me about Amy. She, she is intimately <laughs> familiar with running short on mm, cash. Yes. And using these workarounds, especially during tax season, that's in spite of the fact that she and her husband make about $50,000 a year, just short of the average household income in the U.S. All right. Well, what matters is that you have to live within your means. Isn't this something Clark Howard talks about? You have to live within your means. Whatever your means are. And sometimes your means can be quite large, but if you don't live within them, just ask MC Hammer. <laughs> then you lose your money. So he had $32 million, and he blew through it in a few years because he didn't live within his means. If you make $50,000 a year, you have to live within your means. If you make $500,000 a year, you have to live within your means. And part of living within your means is you have some money in savings or something else in case something happens or you come up short. And that is a priority over the smartphone. But how can I get in touch and my things? And well, that's why they call them priorities. You've got to figure out how to get them all. You can write a letter. Until Bernie becomes president. That's government... right. You'll all get in the phone. The Bernie phone. <laughs> the Bernie phone. And uh, everything's going to be free then. Child care will be free. Facebook, child uh, care. College. The Everyth phone will watch your kid. <laughs> everything's free. That's kind of true. <laughs> but Eric, I mean, don't you have a bit of personal experience? Because I have you the... were making a lot of money yes. and then you weren't. Yes, and I had to live within my means. Did you I still could... have a smartphone? I did have a smartphone, but busted. I never... Did no, you have cable? No, I you never, busted. I never borrowed. I never <laughs> took money from any entities. I never took money from the government. I never collected unemployment, even though it's insurance I've paid into all my life. I may have leaned on my brother-in-law a little bit, but I paid him back. Uh -oh. That's the way you do it, right? Within families. Uh, Chuck disagrees, he says. He bought my smartphone. <laughs> uh, yes. Chuck, Chuck disagrees, he says. Eric, cell phones are as essential as electricity. People don't have landlines anymore. <laughs> I love it. Everything's a utility if you don't want to do the things that prioritize your life. So much easier to say, oh, I have to have this. All right, you know what? I have to get out of here. That's what I got to do because the music says the radio show's over. But we're going to go over and do the podcast 30. You can join us over there. Go to the Von Hessler Doctrine Facebook page or the WSB Radio Facebook page. Click on the red box and voila, you're watching us do the podcast 30. Thanks for listening to the Von Hessler Doctrine Podcast. Remember, you can hear the show every weekday from 9 to noon right here on 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's News and Talk. What do you say? What do you say? Take a chance. I'll tell you what I say. <laughs> Podcast 30 starts right now. That's what I say. <sighs> I'm Eric Von Hessler. I don't know why the hell you'd be tuning into this if you didn't already know that. But they taught me in radio slash podcast school to always start by announcing my name. That's Tim Andrews, J-Rad rocking the tunes, Autumn Fisher doing whatever it is she does. And joining us from Studio B1, Gregory Russ. Love. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> do you know I hate a that heart gag. thing? I don't even know how to do it. This way. I don't even. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. On that Samsung thing, I, I tuned oh, in. I tuned into a little bit of the end of the Samsung Unpack 2020 or whatever. And, man, they still do it. Other, like the, All the photos and stuff. Uh, the, like re really hot 21 year old girls uh, doing that heart thing. With their, what a turnoff. You know, I'm, I'm turned off by two things with hot girls. Uh, a cigarette in the hand or that heart thing with the... And farting. Cigarette means yeah, they're good farting. to go.